hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel if you are watching this channel for the first time please i want you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos today we are going to look at measurements of physical quantities what are physical quantities physical quantities are things or quantities that we can measure with our physical words eyes and in physics if a quantity is not measured it cannot be quantified or it cannot be certified and most times we use units to certify certain quantities now these physical quantities are divided into two they are fundamental and derived quantities physical quantities are divided into two they are fundamental quantities and derived quantities so join me so i can explain these fundamental and derived quantities fundamental quantities are those quantities that are independent of other quantities what do i mean by that other quantities depend on them that is they cannot do without the fundamental quantities and their units are called fundamental units so let us see the examples of fundamental quantities with their units We have various examples of fundamental quantities. We have the first one is length. Unit of length is meter, while the abbreviation is m. So anytime you see m, just know that it is for unit for what? Meter. Unit of mass is what? Kilogram, while the abbreviation is kg. Unit of time is seconds, while the abbreviation is x. Unit of temperature is Kelvin, while the abbreviation is K. Then we have amount of substance. The unit is what? Mole, while the abbreviation is mole. We have electric current. The unit is amperes, and the abbreviation is A. The last is luminous intensity. The unit is candela, while the abbreviation is CD. So this is all we can say about fundamental what? quantities. Now, despite that we have seven examples of fundamental quantities, there are these three fundamental quantities that are very, very what, important. And they are the length, the mass, and the time. Why are they important? They are important because we are going to use them to determine the dimension of other physical quantities. Derived quantities. Derived quantities are those quantities that depend on the fundamental quantities. They can be obtained from the combination of two or more fundamental quantities. It means that these derived quantities can have their own quantities when we combine two or more fundamental quantities. Their units are called derived units. So the units of derived quantities are called derived units. Let us look at some of the examples of derived quantities and their derivation. The first example of derived quantities we are going to look at is the area. What is area? Area is length and is breadth. Now, the length is measured in meters. Also, the breadth is measured in meters. So you are going to have meter times meter. Now, from the law of indices, any value that is on its own automatically has a power of 1, invisible power of 1. So this meter has invisible power of 1. Why does it have invisible power of 1? Also, from the first law of indices, if the bases are the same with multiplication, you are going to take one of the bases and add the powers. So since we have meter here and meter here, so the bases are what? The same. I'm going to take one, which is meter, then I'm going to add the powers because of this multiplication here. So I will have 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, which will give rise to what? Meter square. So the units of area becomes meter square. The second one, which we are going to look at, is what? Volume. Volume is equal to length times breadth times height. All right, length is measured in meters, breadth is measured in meters. 
height is measured in meters. Also, using the law of indices, they have invisible power of one. So I have one, one, one. So if you take one of the bases, we're going to add the power. So we have one plus one plus one. That is one plus one plus one, which will give rise to what? Meter cube. So the unit of volume is meter cube. Let us look at speed. The speed is defined as distance divided by time. So, what is distance? Distance is measured in meters. Y time is measured in seconds. Okay? Now, from the law of indices, this one has invisible power of 1. Why does one also have invisible power of 1? But if you have denominator and numerator, we are going to carry this denominator up. It's a power of minus 1. So, we are going to have mx minus 1. So, unit of speed becomes mx minus 1. So, what do we have? We can call it meter per second. Meter per second. I hope you understand that. So, the next you are going to look at is velocity. So, the velocity is defined as displacement all over time displacement is also distance so we can say that it is measured in what in meters so we have meters y time is measured in seconds okay still following the law of indices the seconds is going to come up to carry a sign of negative so which will give rise to what meter per second meter per second although velocity and speed they have the same unit but speed is a scalar quantity while velocity is a vector quantity so let's look at the next one which is acceleration acceleration is defined as velocity change over time that is change in velocity over time okay now for us to have known that velocity is meters per second meters per second we are going to have that velocity is meters per second okay divided by time which is also measured in seconds so we have second now the law of indices is also applied because this seconds is also coming up to carry a negative sign so we have this is meter per second times per second now look at it the basis are what the same i'm still going to add them take one of the bases and add the powers so i'm going to have meters per second per second which will give rise to what meters per second square so unit of acceleration is what meters per second square the next we are going to look at now is force what is force force is mass times acceleration okay unit of mass is kilogram why units of acceleration which you have already gotten as what meters per second square let us substitute it in to have mass as kilogram multiplied by acceleration to be what meters per second square so we are going to have kilogram meters per second square kilogram meters per second square although 
Units of force can also be measured in newtons. But for you to be able to know the basic units of force, you should know the units of force as kilogram meters per second square. The next you are going to look at is work. Work is defined as force times distance. Force times distance. We have already gotten the unit of force as kilogram meters per second square. So you are going to write it down so you can multiply to see the unit of work. So I have kilogram meters per second square. That is the unit for work. Then multiply by distance, which is measured in meters. So I'm going to have meters. Okay. Now look at these two units. Something is common. We have meter here and also meter here. So this have invisible power of one, invisible power of one. So I'm going to add it together using the law of indices to give me kilogram meter one plus one per second square, which will give rise to kilogram meter square per second square. So the units of work becomes kilogram meter square per second square, although work can me be measured in joules. The next we are going to look at is momentum. The momentum is defined as mass times velocity. Mass, which you already know, is measured in kilogram. And velocity is measured in meters per second. Okay? So by the time I multiply the two together, I'm going to get the unit for momentum, which will be kilogram meter per second kilogram meters per second okay so the next we are going to look at is pressure pressure is defined as force over area What is force? Because we have already gotten force to be kilogram per meter, kilogram meters per second square. So we have kilogram meters per second square divided by the unit of area is meter square. I will have meter square. Now, from the law of indices again, this meter square is going to come up to carry a negative sign, which is what? Kilogram meter per second square times per meter square. Now I'm going to add it together. This half power of one, why this one half power of minus one? Bringing it together with the law of indices is going to give me kilogram meter one minus two, one minus two, then per second square, which will give rise to what? Kilogram meter one minus two is going to give me minus one, then per second square. So this becomes the unit for what? Pressure, which is what? Kilogram meter, kilogram per meter per second square. Although pressure is also measured in Pascal, it's also measured in Pascal and also. Newton per meter square. But this will help you to get the base unit of pressure. The last we are going to look at today is density. Density is defined as mass 
the unit volume that is mass over volume okay unit of mass is what kilogram y volume is what meter cube so it's going to come up to give me kilogram per meter cube so the unit of density becomes kilogram per meter cube kilogram per meter cube this is how we can get the derived units of our physical quantities so let's go to the dimension of physical quantities dimension of physical quantities the three quantities that we use to determine the dimension are the length the mass and the time okay we already know that the unit for length is meter and the abbreviation is m the unit of mass is kilogram the abbreviation is kg and the unit of time is seconds where the abbreviation is what x so these are their units if you want to get the dimension what you are going to do is for meter which is m you're going to represent it with what length but instead of writing the length in full, we are just going to write capital what? L. So the dimension of length of meter is what? L. Then the dimension of kilogram, which is unit for mass, is what? M. The dimension of seconds, which is units for time, is T. So with this, we can get the dimension of our derived quantities. Let us look at the dimension of various or different derived quantities quantities so let us look at the derived quantities and their dimensions the units of area is meter square which we obtain a meter is unit for length so for the dimension we're going to just write the capital L so we have L square volume unit is what meter cube okay so I'm going to write L cube then i told you earlier that speed and velocity they have the same unit so which is meters per second so i'm going to write meter per second meter is unit for length so i'll write capital l y seconds is unit for time i'm going to write capital t capital t power minus one what of acceleration acceleration is meters per second square so i'll have meters per second square so the dimension is going to be l t minus two wow i know you understand what we did how you can be able to get the derived quantities and the dimension so i want you to find the units and the dimension of these quantities force work pressure momentum and density then put the answer in your comment section if you are watching this video for the first time please do well to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for more videos share and comment see you next time in my next video bye